So yeah, we'll be talking about comic books today. Lots of comic book, movie, shenanigans. Should be pretty hype. Uh, we need a full breakdown of everything you can think of on today's show. Um, shout outs to Bear for the um, podcast stuff. The artwork is pretty badass, to say the least. Alright guys, so welcome to the stream. Everything should be almost ready. Let me get my screen over here a little bit. There we go. Yeah, welcome guys. Welcome to the stream. Um, today we're we'll doing a full podcast uh, rundown of all the movies coming out pretty soon in the uh, world of comic books. Um, as you know, there's a, there's a pretty large breakdown of films dropping pretty soon uh, over the next few months. So I figured I'd run down, you know, most of the, the big movies you can, you can look forward to um, in the future um, on the podcast. So it uh, should be pretty show. Get some things that I loaded up here. So yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, a bunch of different things. Yeah, bear, bear help with all the panel stuff uh, for the show. So shout out to him. I'll be uh, putting together some more stuff uh, later on, depending on which uh, episodes we're doing for the show. But I figure it's not bad. Um, not, not, not a bad uh, uh, start for uh, the podcast. You know, it's only a second episode, so it'll only get better over time, um, hopefully, throughout the show. So uh, today we're going to be talking about all the shows you see, all the movies you see at the bottom of the screen there. We got um, Captain America Civil War and Iron Man. We got Suicide Squad, Batman vs. Superman, Doctor Strange, X Men Apocalypse. Um, even Deadpool, which already came out. And we have, uh, you know, Civil War, of course. You guys saw the trailer that happened yesterday. The hype was pretty real. Spider-Man, all that shenanigans. We're going to go all over all of it today on the show. Should be pretty hype, guys. I'm pretty excited. Um, so I can kind of start off the show, you know, just asking you guys a few questions. So, like, what do you guys think... What do, what do you guys think is going to be... Like you know, the biggest the biggest movie um, of the year as far as comic movies go. I'm gonna talk about all of them and give you guys an idea of which ones I think are gonna be the, the big the big number. Um, but we'll, we'll see exactly what happens, you know, as far as like that goes. But I think that uh, I have my favorites to say the least about which ones I think will be pretty pretty solid. But I don't want to you know just just call it out necessarily. So. Okay, Mega Valoran says that he thinks Batman vs Superman will be the biggest. Understandable. All right. Sorry, guys. We're gonna be like going into uh, the podcast now. We're gonna just talk about uh, each film. You know, my, kind of my expectations for each movie, um, and we'll see uh, what you guys think about you know what we show on the stream. I'll probably show a few trailers. Uh, you know, for Civil War, um, X Men Apocalypse. There's no trailer for um, Doctor Strange yet, but there is one for you know Batman vs Superman, which is coming out pretty soon. We're a few weeks away, actually. It's, it's uh, the 25th, so um, less than two weeks away from the next big film, which is pretty awesome. I think that people are going to be surprised by a few of these films. Just kind of really surprised by um, Deadpool. It's going to be kind of a similar thing going on with the other movies coming up here. Um, mainly because some of these characters aren't as, as you know, well-known. Uh, most of the cast of Suicide Squad, as far as the actual characters go, is pretty out there so people aren't really they don't know what to expect it's kind, of, it's kind of like guardians of the galaxy you know what i mean like it's got that um kind of higher tone mature audience um kind of feel to it but also uh some lovable characters you might fall in love with and everybody likes harley and that kind of stuff so that might be interesting we got x-men apocalypse which is kind of like a mixture of, of storylines there of apocalypse and the horsemen and you know the whole breakdown between magneto and Professor x there's a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff going on there, you know what I mean? Then you have Doctor Strange, which is uh, still pretty intriguing to me uh, overall because I love the character. Um, it's pretty zany, and, you know, I want to see how they introduce the magic aspects of the Marvel Universe into um, the cinematic universe. So it should be pretty cool to kind of see. But yeah, uh, so as far as that goes, we should uh, just go right into it, guys. So let's see, which, which movie should we start off with? Uh, you know, I, I think... You know, I, I want to see if we want to go with a, with a positive. You know, since we already, since Deadpool already came out, I can talk a little bit about Deadpool first. Um, as far as like comic movies go, 
it has been, you know, smashing every expectation that you could think of for that film. I mean, uh, overall, Deadpool has done phenomenally well. It's been it's done, it's done extremely well compared to um, what people thought it was going to do. Um, and overall, that's what can you expect? I mean, like it, it was exactly what they wanted it to be—a perfect storm almost. It came out in a, in a great weekend. We had a, a, a episode about Deadpool um, two weeks ago. Um, and basically, it hit the right the right points at the right time. Um, Valentine's Day weekend, there was not really much competition at all, and you know it it had the right sense of humor. Um, Ryan Reynolds he really cared about the role. Um, Fox did not tamper with it that much, so you, you had the right stuff to become successful. And now you see some of these other movies getting pushed now. Rated R films, um, comic films are getting pushed out more. Um, and there's plans for them to happen um, in the near future. Like I, I think Sony just announced that they're gonna um, move forward their, their Venom movie. Um, I'm not sure if that means they're gonna go with the Venom route, you know, with uh, Flash. Um, you guys don't know about the um, some of the newest um, Venom stories. Um, Flash Thompson from Spider-Man, um, you know, who was a um, army vet, ends up getting um, hurt and injured. Um, they put him in a symbiote program with the American government, where he becomes a special agent who uses the symbiote powers, becomes special agent Venom. I would watch that movie. I think that'd be pretty cool, um, especially if it you know ties in some of the Spider-Man stuff. Wouldn't it be bad. Wouldn't it be bad at all. I, I'd be I'd be happy about that one. But that's if they do it right. So um you know there's, there's some some big expectations coming out for some of these movies. Deadpool kind of you know surpassed those expectations for what it was supposed to be. Um and it was a good film. Some of these other movies though that are, you know the hype is pretty damn strong. They don't have that underdog quality to them. You know what I mean they don't have that. The underdog feel that you that, that you know something that Deadpool rolled in with, so people are looking for things out of some of these other films, and if they're not there, there'll be a lot of displeasure, um, to say the least. Damn, Danny, what's up, Steve? Ryan Reynolds rede- redeemed himself for that horrible Green Lantern movie. Well, I mean, to be fair to Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern was not you know I want to say that's Ryan Reynolds' fault. Okay, he he just came into a you know a shit show, <laughs> like. Like, there was so much wrong with, like, Green Lantern. Like, from the writing standpoint, from the producing to, like, the actual direction, there was just so much wrong with that movie um, that I can't really put that on Ryan Reynolds. He just came into it to play the role. It's like it's like Daredevil. It was like the Daredevil movie. The, the, how many people were involved in that movie to make it into what it was? You know, our ghostwriter. Can you really blame it just on the lead actor? You can't, because there was so much that was just so bad about those movies. Green Lantern had like so much wrong. But the best about the best part about um Green Lantern was uh, Matt Strong with the uh, Sinestro it was so like comic book accurate. It was pretty cool. But um they take, they made some pretty cool nods at, at, at Green Lantern and some other movies in the um Deadpool film as well. So I definitely recommend seeing it. Go check it out, guys. Show show some love to uh um you know that cast and, and crew who put in that kind of time and effort to actually make that happen. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're gonna go into a few other movies. But yeah, Deadpool was definitely worth seeing. I think that it kind of started off the year right. You know, it was early February. Um, I think that we, we're seeing a trend now of um, some of these comic movies coming com- coming out, you know, earlier in the year um, to kind of avoid the summer blockbuster stuff. Um, and it makes it... Because they're still competitive, but, you know, it spreads out these movies a bit more so there's not as much fatigue. Because as, as you guys know, um, like, basically Civil War and... Banner Superman was supposed to go up the same weekend, and that would have been hurtful for both both companies. So they spread it out a bit more. So we're seeing like more of these movies. There's so many comic movies coming out constantly now. We get like five or six movies per year now, um, at the at the at the least. That they're spreading them out a little bit more throughout the year to keep you know the fatigue from happening and also keep the box office you know from imploding. Um, so it's it's, it's a smart move. But now we're getting these movies early in the year. So we got Deadpool, you know, in February. We got, you know, Batman or Superman in, in, in March here. And then we had a little bit of a break until um, Civil War. Um, then you got X-Men, Suicide Squad. It's going to be a, pre- a pretty interesting year, to say the least. With the red shirt, yes. Yes, indeed. More Flash action. I watched, the, I caught up on the Flash a little bit last night, too. All right, I was watching the Earth, the Earth 2 stuff. I was a bit behind, but there were some pretty cool episodes. Um, I'm glad they're taking a little nod to the uh, Earth to You world. It's pretty cool. Um, and Zoom is still just as terrifying. Like uh, he's a great villain right now. Pretty the the, the voice and like the, the fucking blue lightning and stuff is so awesome. Uh, Cornbread was up, man. Look for the host. 
Deadpool was legit. Yeah, I say it definitely was. So I mean, there's not much else to say about Deadpool. I think that it's reached its expectation that you know beyond us, which I think it was supposed to get for that movie. It's, it's it's pretty high up there as far as um comic movies go. I think they did exactly what they wanted to do, and it shows. Like they actually cared about the characters. So Deadpool, bam, that one that one reached its its high expectations for itself. Now as far as next movies go, let so me just went with positive. It's time to go for negative, guys. Okay, so for a movie that I'm not excited about right now, X Men Apocalypse. Guys, X-Men Apocalypse is not doing it for me. I gotta say, as far as expectations go, my expectations for this movie are very low right now. I just can't... I can't get down with the X-Men. And, and I love X-Men. Don't get me wrong, I love the comics. DCP, thanks for the host, man. But there's just not enough... Um, there's just not there's not enough going on with the X Men right now that, that that's positive for me. Like everything they release, let me see if I can find that poster that they dropped uh, recently. Everything I see from like X Men does not make me like excited for it. And the, and the same thing kind of happened with uh, Days of Future Past. But the only difference is that with Days of Future Past, you know, the actual trailers for the movie actually made me more hyped for it. I was like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'm seeing these pictures of Quicksilver. He looks pretty lame. But the trailer was badass, so maybe this is going to be a good movie. When I watch the trailer for um, X-Men Apocalypse, it does not make me hype to see the film at all. It just makes me feel like it's going to be a bad movie. I may be wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just being nitpicky. But as of right now, like, it is not... I'm not getting the good movie vibe from X-Men right now. I'm getting, like... Um, I get, I'm getting an X-Men wants to be, Apoc like, wants to be um, Avengers, um, you know, kind of... Thing going on right now. Um, what we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna show uh, a bit of X Men. I'm gonna show a little bit of the trailer. We'll see what you guys think. I just, for me, like, look at this poster here. They just, they just put on the, uh, they just released um two days ago. I'm gonna show it on stream. Um, let me see here. So like, here's this, the poster they put on stream recently. I mean, they put on the, uh, on the, uh, the interwebs. Like, the poster is kind of badass, you know? Like, oh, you know, Apocalypse and, you know, Magneto and Storm and Psylocke. You know, like, you know, that, it does, you know, it's nice to see an X-Men poster, you know, without Wolverine on it for once. All right, it's, it's nice to see X-Men actually being an X-Men. But I would like a poster like this for the other side, you know what I mean? Like, the, uh, the side of Professor X and Jean and Cyclops and all that stuff. Like, that would be pretty cool. I'd be down to see some more of the X-Men, you know, doing their thing. But I'm just not quite sold on this Horseman thing right now. It's not, it's not quite doing it for me. You miss Halle Berry? I think Halle Berry didn't really do much for the role of Storm at all. <laughs> but okay. I don't know. I'm on the fence about this. I think the, the narratives hit it are kind of meh. Like, the story doesn't seem like it doesn't have any weight to it, in my opinion. Like, it doesn't feel like... The story, the size of Apocalypse, the reason why Apocalypse was so effective was because it, it, it shook up everything for, like, you know, the universe. And there were so many, there were so many um, people getting tied into it, and then you had characters like, um, like Angel, who became Archangel, and that was a big deal back then, you know what I mean? Like, there was, there were major characters that were, you know, mainstays of the X-Men that were just, you know, being tossed into Apocalypse's world, and then suddenly it became a, a, a problem, you know? This movie doesn't have that kind of weight to it. There's no... The universe isn't established enough to, you know, create that. Had, had the, you know, the, the last few X-Men films been consistent, you know, maybe that would have worked. You know, maybe if, you know, X-Men 3 hadn't happened and we had had consistent, you know, X-Men films from now, you know, all the way back to 2000, then that kind of weight would have been established, would have had the kind of, you know, feel in there. Um, but... I don't know. It's just me. Maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe there'll be some more there that I'm missing out on. Even the podcast knows about that MSP. My sound is cutting out. I hope not. CB Tech, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. DCB, much love you guys. Basically, I'm just I'm breaking down all the movies I can for the um, upcoming 2016. We're running, we're running through on basically um, X Men first. I was, I'm just not, I'm not feeling the X Men guys. Like, and I love the X Men. I love the characters, um, except for like you know Cyclops. But everybody hates Cyclops, so that's nothing new. 
I'm seeing the movie only because my baby, um, my baby mama Olivia Munn is in it. Well, first off, Olivia Munn is you know booed up with Aaron Rodgers, and as you guys know, I'm Chicago, Chicago fan for life. So the Bears, look, all right, if Olivia Munn can keep Aaron Rodgers distracted enough to keep him sucking, you know, at winning football games, and I'm I'm all for it. But as far as casting goes, I mean, the cast is okay. I mean, like when you look at the cast, though, like here's the thing about X Men. When you look at the X-Men cast, you get, like, great lead actors for the main role. Like, look, look at like, how, how X-Men is, uh, has been um, figured out. Who, like, who in the X-Men do you actually see anymore besides the main three characters? You always get Magneto, you get, you get Professor X, and then you get whatever lead actor, which is usually Wolverine, who's the main conflict of the movie. You get those three... And then the rest just fill in bit parts. They just, like, you know, rotate around the rest of the story. Now it's like they, they threw in um, Jennifer Lawrence, who doesn't want to, she doesn't seem to want to, um, you know, wear the blue. And I, I, even in the poster, she's not wearing the blue. Like, you know, for Mystique, she's just looking like herself. I don't understand. If it's all about meat and pride, you know, you would think that they would have her wearing the blue all the time. But whatever. Um, so... I just feel like there's not there's a there's a disconnect going on there between the characters, what's like the cast and everything else there. They always have strong characters for Magneto and and, and Professor Rex because they anchor the they anchor the the conflict. You know what I mean? Now they have like that kind of push on Apocalypse to anchor the like, you know as the main villain there, but the 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 cast has to kind of come down to uh, you know the rest. Um, but we'll see we'll see what happens with the overall film. I just, I'm not quite sold on it yet. We'll see what happens um, when they start pushing it a bit more on the uh, internet, you know, some more trailers and that kind of stuff. I am kind of interested to see um, Jean Grey and a few of the other characters on the X-Men side um, get used. And of course, you got, you got Bald Professor X, you know, which might be kind of cool. <sighs> He's on Team Dark then. When did Mystique become a, a good guy? Well, I mean, they're, they've been playing around with Mystique, you know, and her um, conflict, you know, on both sides. And where the fuck is my Iceman movie? Iceman movie, which <laughs> okay, Akira. You know, you know, you know where your ice your Iceman movie is, bro. Is is exactly where um where Gambit is. All right. Uh, Shirek, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. More love for Gambit, than, than that's my guy. Yo, yo, look, the thing is that when when Gambit was announced, at first I was hating on Gambit, right? I was like, you know what, this is fucking stupid, Gambit. Why? But if you throw in like you know, the Thieves Guild and everything, like, that could be an interesting story. If you have, like, um, Gambit, you know, and the Thieves, and you throw in Rogue in there, that could be a good one-off movie. I could see, like, it could be like like Deadpool, kind of like his own thing. Um, you know, somewhat mature. I could see that being a movie that they can kind of drop, you know, like they did Deadpool at the beginning of the year or something like that with, uh, you know, just a, a cool radar um, adventure film with like Gambit being cool and stuff. Now, as far as Channing Tatum being Gambit, I don't know if I can know about that, but whatever. Um, <laughs> don't do that to me. Hey, hey, man, Iceman, really? In what way would Iceman getting his own film help help either side of that? <laughs> that? Anyways, guys, all right. So, X Men Apocalypse. Look, it's it's it is what it is right now. We got we got Storm. We got um, Angel, who's just been on and off in in all the films. The best part about X Men Three was Beast, to be honest. And I don't see like you know Beast. It looks like he's got some kind of. And I, I like the actor that plays Beast. I like him in Skins, but the 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 makeup and stuff does not look like it. It's just not quality enough for me. Like like Kelsey Grammer as Beast was looking badass. That shit was hype. Plus all the leather. You guys can see the, the picture there um, below me. Like the leather outfits. If, if they wanted to fucking make some cool X Men outfits, they should have went with the New Mutants outfit from a. Uh, the one they had for Deadpool. That that outfit looked like it felt like freaking. It felt like freaking X Men. Uh, I'll show you guys a picture of that too. Hold on. Like this outfit here, like this out here, this outfit here, like give me some New Mutants out outfits or something like you know some X Men style outfits. You know, if you're gonna do the, the, the fucking leather again, at least make it somewhat creative so it's not just you know black leather. 
but whatever. You know, I can't. I'm done with X Men, guys. I'm, I'm done ranting about X Men. They need to just do better. Just do better, um, Fox. All right, we need we need better than you know Fantastic Four, whatever the hell that was. When they call it Fantastic Four, I don't understand how we could be in in the year 2016 and The Incredibles is still the best Fantastic Four movie we've gotten so far. That's right, guys. The Incredibles is the best Fantastic Four movie we've gotten in 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 the last fucking 15 years. Anyways, next movie, we're moving on to the next film on the list, guys. We're going to move on to Suicide Squad. So, Suicide Squad's coming out. Um, I feel like we have to watch the trailer because it's so badass. Now, this is a, this is the idea of a, a trailer doing things right. I mean, can you really say that, like, you hate the Suicide Squad trailer i mean like i feel like that, that that's one of the it's one of the, the best comic book movie trailers we've gotten so far in the, the past few years like the first one was kind of iffy this one did like it pretty much took away all of the doubt really in, as far as um the movie actually doing okay for itself but i mean that's just me uh you guys can have your own opinion would have loved the new mutants of generation next movie that's the, it's funny you mentioned that dcb because there's talks about a new mutants movie actually happening uh pretty pretty soon um, someone's actually working on a script already for it. Um, New Mutants, and apparently there's an X-Force movie kind of in the works. Um, it's rumored. So both of those films may be happening uh, at some point. And I'd be down for both. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys another trailer here. We'll see what, what happens with the, uh, the next one. I'm amped as... <laughs> really? Okay, well, I'll show you guys the next trailer here for for Suicide Squad. I think that... It, 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 looks, like, it, looks, it looks pretty damn hype. I'm going to just show the trailer, we just uh, rock out to it for a minute here, and then I'm going to talk about Suicide Squad next, and then we'll go through, um, most likely, uh, we'll branch off into Batman for Superman or the other films. Yo, Wolfgang, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. I want a simple task force of the most dangerous people on the planet. They're bad guys. Worst of the worst. Too late. Open the gate! My time is come. Sent down my spine. Was this a uh, cheerleading tryouts? Hi, boys. Goodbye, everybody. Dead shot. Guy uh, shoots people. He's a crocodile. And he eats people. Burns people. You're possessed by a witch. Mm, she's just crazy. What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what they really said. This is the deal. You're going somewhere very bad. Whoa. Do something that'll get you killed. Go we'll save the world. I can't wait to show you my toys. Let's do something fun. Seriously, the hell's wrong with you people? We're bad guys. It's what we do. Nothing really matters to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, ZV Tech, I got, I got you, I got you, man. I, you didn't really miss much. I was just saying that um, basically the actual trailer itself um, is one of the best examples of an like, actual trailer being done correctly. I feel like they didn't show too much, but they also like got you kind of hyped for like whatever extras or goodies you're going to have actually in the film. Something that Batman vs. Superman did not do very well, in my opinion. But when you think about it, like half these characters no one knows about, and they put them all together in a film in a way that I think that could be pretty interesting. Also, you're getting like you know another film is going to be uh, pretty pretty raunchy, most likely. I'm pretty sure it's rated R. I'm not I'm not quite guaranteeing that. I think it is rated R, though, right? So like that's going to be another um pretty high stakes um move for uh, DC, to say the least. But I think that most likely, this is one of the movies I was most excited about when it got announced because I was actually more hyped for this film than Batman vs. Superman just because DC always relies on Superman and Batman for all of their films. Like They don't, they don't take risks on anything. And the one time they do take a risk on something, they, they chose to put it on Green Lantern. We all know how that, how that turned out. So it's nice to see a movie like this get made and then have like these kind of characters in it. They can play off each other um, and have it be in the same world that they're trying to create with the Justice League. So then you, you can kind of like, you know, see where it can go. I, th- I think that like it can be interesting just because this is one of those films where you can branch off like the Avengers and you can have a different different cast and team every every film. You know what I mean? Um, where is Nightshade, Bronze Tiger, Black Manta, Boo? That's what I'm saying though, Steve. Like this is an introductory film. So if Suicide Squad does well... You could do a sequel with a different team, which is the good part. Um, you know, a lot of people, I think that they wanted to branch off um, into their own film, but they wanted to keep some anchors in there to kind of get people hyped for the film and also, you know, create a da- dynamic that works for the actual movie. So, yes, there's a few thrill ones in there that, you know, like Killer Croc and, um, you know, like the, the, the flame guy, whatever. There's going to be a couple of those guys in there. Understandable. A town, what the hell? Yay! Thank you for the host. Um, so yes, I don't know why your your host down played it, but no one else did. did. But okay, welcome to the stream. But yes, yeah, so, so basically we're gonna be uh, just breaking down a little bit more. I want to say that a few things that are are pretty good about this entire situation, though. Yes, there's a couple bit part people in there, a few, um, you know, kind of thrown in. But you can branch off into another another movie. So, like, I'd say, you know, like, Black Manta, for example. I mean, Black Manta's going to clearly... He's going to clearly be his own, in, in his own, you know, league. Like, so, Black Manta, I don't think you're going to see him in, in Suicide Squad. I think he's going to be in an Aquaman film or something like that. Which is still happening. I mean, Aquaman is going to still be happening on the actual, you know, its own scale. So, Black Manta's probably already in the plans for that. So, that's a completely different thing. Um, I heard that comments in this film is like the tattooed man or something like that. So, um, three Batman villains is too much. But Steve, like, what I'm saying is that you got to think about the, the the overall market of the film. You can't just throw in a bunch of random villains, um, you know, and not have something to anchor the film, and still get the creative, you know, get the um, casual fan crowd to come in. Um. So that's what I'm saying. You have to make sure that you, you kind of branch it out, but you want to make sure that you have something to balance it out for the casual crowd. You can't just, like, you know, put in a bunch of random villains that no one knows about outside of comic book people. They do that with Guardians of the Galaxy, but Guardians of the Galaxy was, like, you know, a, it was a, a space opera. You know, like, when you think about Guardians of the Galaxy, it did a lot of stuff in one movie. And it was also, you know, like, it was like a Star Wars. You know, it had, like, you know, a new universe. It was space, aliens... You know, creative stuff going on. This is happening on Earth, all right? You know, and there's people with guns and people with arrows and people with swords. It's not quite the same. So to keep people in, in, intrigued, people want to see a new Joker. They want to see Harley and Joker together. That's a good anchor for the film. So you get Joker in here. He's going to probably make a cameo in Battle Superman. It gives them a reason to kind of get them in the theaters and then watch the film, you know? So it's smart. I think that um, that's a good move on their part. As far as, like, you know, the overall cast goes, yes, there's a lot of no-names. There's a lot of, you know, random villains in there that we don't really care about. But they may have some, some good moments in there. You don't know yet. I think that, like, the, the cool part is that you don't know yet. You know what I mean? It's one of those movies where they're not milking it for 
every single like, you've seen the Joker, but you haven't seen too much of him at all. They're they're saving a lot of that for the film, which is nice. Like it makes me want to go see it more. Like I want to see what happens in here, you know. On the other hand, compared to Suicide Squad, you know, showing showing just enough tease to get us excited before it. Um, Batman vs Superman has done more than tease. <laughs> like, <laughs> so we'll talk about that one next. And then we go on to, uh, I think, uh, Doctor Strange and then Civil War. But, yes, yeah, so Suicide Squad, guys, I think that is looking pretty good to me. As far as, like, the overall tone, I like the tone they created for the film. And I think that the, the good thing about that is that you can kind of branch it out into some of the other movies they're going to be making, uh, including Batman, um, which, you know, Ben Affleck's still interested in. So I think that we'll be able to see more um, of this kind of tone in film that they're creating here, where it's... It's hiding reality, but it's not like Nolan, though. You know, it's not Nolan verse. It's not like that extreme because you have Killer Croc. You have like you know, a witch lady. You got like crazy powers. So we're still getting, you know, a high level comic book movie, but it's not so grounded that it, you know you don't get these kind of characters in it. You know what I mean? And that's a, that's a, it's kind of a tough balance to get. You don't get like Batman has a bunch of crazy villains like Poison Ivy and you know, Mister Freeze and Bane, a lot of these characters, you know, it's hard to pull off in the realistic setting unless you go all the way in, you know, which is why people uh, love The Flash so much, because The Flash is going all in. Comic book wise, The Flash TV show is going all in on the comic books, guys. You know, it's, it's, it's not darting that shit at all. And so people embrace that. They like it. So it's the same thing with this kind of film. I mean, the Joker's got fucked up teeth, because I'm pretty sure Batman probably knocked all those teeth out over and over again. Um... But yeah, you know, Deadshot, exactly. Deadshot's a, a, a Batman villain. I think most likely um, he'll be probably the main the main um, lead role for the film, I think. I think it'll be him and Harley, and then Joker will kind of be like the antagonist, kind of, you know, wild card. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But Deadshot, you know, with the family and everything, it makes sense. So yeah, next, next up, we're going to be going up <laughs> A-Town. I'm all in. Yeah, I bet you are. So yeah, Batman vs Superman, guys. You guys already know this one. This one is going to be probably the most controversial um, because people love both characters, and we we all know that basically there's no in between for you know this this battle. Basically, is people either think that Batman's gonna win or Superman, and here's why: there's no like winning people over really with this one, but. I gotta say that Batman versus Superman, Batman still intrigues me the most because we haven't seen this version of Batman on film yet. Uh, Superman kind of isn't really doing much for me. Like uh, to be honest, the only thing about Superman I'm impressed by so far is that uh, Zack Snyder made his suit more blue than before. So he has, he has to listen to fans who are like, you know what, your his suit is not blue enough. So I guess I guess that's cool. But um, as far as, like, the actual battle, I can say, like, yes, I'm going to go see it. Of course, I'm going to go fucking see the movie. Who won't go see that movie, you know what I mean? But, of course, it, it's just, it's just, it's just, I don't know, guys. I feel like it could be a bit stronger as far as, like, how they handled the film. But I think, I think like, to say the least, I, I just want more, like, more to hold on to you from this movie right now. There's no... This is another thing where... It's, super, it's superhero movies, you know what I mean? Like, they're... They're meant to be somewhat fluff at times, and they're big blockbusters. But... The weight for the film, I feel like, is gonna rely more on... The, atta- the antagonist again. Because Batman... I can understand Batman's uh, frame point, you know? It's like, Superman, if he went rogue, he could destroy the entire planet. We saw what happened with him and Zod fighting. So Batman's like, you know what, they get you out the, out the paint. You know, fuck you, Batman. I mean, fuck you, Superman. You gotta go. Superman, on the other hand, he's like, just trying to be, you know, what he's supposed to be. And so, like, the conflict is there. I'm just not sure if I'm, like, I'm not completely sold on how they're gonna, you know, do it in the film. But at the same time, visually, you know, I, I can give Zack Snyder credit. Visu- visually, he does a good job of, like, you know, creating these super-powered fights. 
Um, like Man of Steel, I have to give him credit for Man of Steel because it was like the first like major like knockdown drag out fight I saw Superman actually get into. Well, it was died, and it was well done. You know, on Feyre and everything, that was pretty badass. It took like you know an hour and a half to get to, but those were some cool moments. So like, I look forward to like the fight scenes. And I look forward to Wonder Woman. To be honest, a lot of the cameo stuff is what I'm more excited about. Wonder Woman, you know, is actually pretty awesome. Uh, I think that the suit looks pretty awesome for her costume. And so I'm more intrigued by, like, her character and how she ends up being in, you know, Gotham or Metropolis or whatever. And a few other characters there, you know. Like, apparently there's going to be some cameos from, like, Aquaman and Flash or something like that in there. Cyborg. So I'm trying to see how they're going to squeeze these characters in there and what they're going to be doing exactly with them. Lex, I'm not, like, Lex is kind of, he's just zany. I don't understand, like, the whole Lex Luthor part. Like, they didn't make him, they didn't make him very intimidating at all. Then there's Doomsday. It's just, uh, guys. I'm going to show a bit of the trailer here. Um, They released a new trailer about two weeks ago. I'll show it on stream, and then we'll give our final opinion on it. As far as, like, box office goes, I think that um it'll do pretty well. Obviously. Everyone's going to want to talk about this film. I think that, you know... Suicide Squad kind of has the surprise factor where it can, it can kind of go either way like Deadpool did. But Batman vs. Superman, it has an expectation behind it. You know what I mean? Like, it has this expectation to actually do well. We'll see what that actually happens with it. I'm not sure. Um, I'll show the trailer real quick, and then we'll see We'll see what happens, guys. But I mean, You know what? As far as like, the overall look, overall look, I give them credit. Superman, he looks like Superman. Batman looks like Batman. They got the suit down. They got the badass, you know, Dark Knight Returns suit. The feel and the aesthetic is nice. I don't even mind the, the dark filter that, you know, Zack Snyder uses on this one. A lot of it looks nice, you know, overall. I'm just wondering how much of it will be substance as far as, like, things that will make you want to watch the movie over and over again. But this could be one of those movies that I could be wrong about where I'm like, you know what? I went in thinking this was going to be whack, and now I'm pleasantly surprised. I like having that feeling, you know. There's, there's like when a movie surprises me, I I, I I like that. I think this has a better chance of doing that for me than X Men. X Men is like looking like my my gut is telling me that the one's gonna be trash, but I don't know. So I'm gonna show the trailer real quick, guys, and then we're gonna move on to you know a few a few new things here, a few a few uh, Marvel films, Marvel movies. Hold on, guys. Let me put it up. Master Wayne. Thermal imaging is showing me two dozen hostiles on the third floor. Why don't I drop you off on the second? The rock bottom, though. See, this is badass. Pretty slow in my old age, Alfred. Even you got too old to die young, not for lack of trying. He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. If we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. The greatest gladiator match in the history of the world. Versus man. Day versus night. You're psychotic. That is a three syllable word for any thought too big for little minds. Can be innocent.
a few things. I feel, I feel like there's like a few things that can kind of win me over with that one. But I don't know, guys. Like, like I, I like like the way it shot. It, kind of, it reminds me a lot of, of Watchmen, which I mean is is one of those films I think was before its time. Like the, the way it's shot reminds me a lot of like how Watchmen was shot, and of course it's the same director, so it's not surprising. But like I like the Batman scenes, like the the breakdown at the beginning, like the fight and everything like that was pretty badass. But there's just a few like a few cheesy moments that just like I'm like, oh, this, this feel like it's gonna get really cringeworthy right here. Like whenever I see Lex like talking about oh Night versus Dark and you know like the Bat versus. Like, I don't fucking care. Like, that that whole thing just takes me out of the entire, like, realism they're trying to create there. Like, I think that Wonder Woman could be pretty cool. I think she could actually um, end up being the... She can steal the show. And then you've got, you know, Batman, I think... The way they handle Batman has been pretty badass. The Batmobile, the suit, like, the way... This is combat and everything there. Everyone's been hating on Ben Affleck for his um, role. I think that he's kind of grown on me a bit, you know, as far as being Bruce Wayne and playing that part. I, I mean, depending on how he is in the film, I wouldn't mind seeing a Batman movie with, with that kind of like costume and look, you know, against like, you know, Jared Little's Joker or somebody like that, depending on how the Joker turns out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of that. Um, but Superman, this movie's kind of on the cuff for me. I feel like it's going to be one of those movies like Man of Steel, where I like a lot about what the movie does and there's some things that really piss me off. Um... I'm not going to go into the full rant about that, but Superman, Man of Steel, look. Okay, first off, Man of Steel. Guys, Man of Steel with the whole, you know, Papa Kent, you know, and the spoilers, guys. If you've never seen Man of Steel for some reason yet, good old, you know, Daddy Kent, you know, going, no, don't save me, son. Don't use your powers. I'm going to just die in this tornado. What Superman was going to look like? like what? When would that ever happen? I don't care, like, you know, whatever kind of dark and edgy, you know, story they're trying to create for Superman. I've seen the fucking Smallville to know that Superman is not going to fucking just, uh, you know, fly off and let his dad die in a tornado without saving him because he didn't want his secret to be um, taken out. Fuck that. All right, that's just stupid. Um, I didn't really care as much about, you know, him killing Zod and all that stuff. Whatever. That's, that's you know, just a choice, you know? And I feel like that's okay for a film like that because it took a risk. So I'm okay with, like, the movie taking a risk on some of those things and, and being different and being out there as compared to um, just doing things because you want to make it more somewhat exciting but stupid. So, like, this could be one of the movies where it could do a lot of things really well and it makes one big decision in the film that can kind of just cross off half the audience, you know what I mean? It has that feeling to it. So, like, if it makes it through the checks where I'm like, oh, you know what? This has been a pretty badass film so far. It hasn't fucked up. It could be pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm giving it, it, you know, kind of wait and see. I'm definitely going to see it. We'll probably open weekend. Just like everybody else. And I'll let you guys know what I think. There'll be a, a podcast definitely about this one. But I'm sure there'll be enough. The movie itself is going to be like two and a half hours almost. It's like two minutes and 18, the two hours and 18 minutes or something like that. Something crazy. So you're going to get plenty of bang for your buck with this one. Uh, so I, I definitely let you guys know what I think about the movie. We'll be having another podcast about that probably in another um, week or two when it, when it drops. But, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about that one. We'll see We'll see what happens with it. But it can win me over. X-Men's got a long way to go, but I think Batman vs. Superman can win me over. Next up, we're going to move on to the Marvel films um, coming up pretty soon as well. Um, you know, one of the smartest things I, I, you, I've noticed, guys, in case you didn't know, one of the smartest things uh, that I think Marvel's been doing is that they've been pushing out these uh, these trailers and uh, these teases in between the whole DC, you know, bandwagon. Like, Marvel's like, you know what? Batman vs. Superman comes out in two weeks. We're going to just drop another trailer for Civil War, you know, right now. Because they have, like, I, I mean, to be honest, like, I haven't really been hearing as much about Batman or Superman. I'm not, I'm not, like, biased towards one or the other right now. I'm just saying, in general, as far as, like, the promo goes, promotion goes, like, everyone was so fucking hyped for that trailer yesterday for Civil War. And then, like, I think that a lot of people forgot that, like, Batman or Superman is coming out, like, in, like, on their week. You know, like, it's, I mean, they, they got that right perfect storm where they just pushed out Civil War 
um, news right before the promo starts getting really heavy for Batman versus Superman. Because next week will be going crazy. There'll be like, you know, teasers and commercials everywhere for this Batman versus Superman movie. But right now, we're not quite at the at the height of the um, promo, you know, time. So they pushed out that trailer right now. And it was talking about Civil War and Spider-Man and everything else there. And now we've got, you know, that nice sweet spot, you know, before it moves into craziness next week. So it's really smart on their part. Um, so I think we're going we're gonna to go with Civil War um, for the last film of the night. But first, we're going to talk about Doctor Strange real quick. Doctor Strange um, is a little bit... A little bit uh, known about it so far. It's coming out in November. So basically, you guys don't know how, how Marvel works. They put out two films a year, basically. One new franchise, one re- return franchise, usually in most cases. It's usually like, you know, a sequel and then a new franchise. So you notice the pattern. You've got them like Ant-Man, and you got Avengers 2. You've got them like uh, Thor, and you got Iron Man 2. You know what I mean? Like, you've got them, like those kind of balances, you know? It's the same thing, where they, they've got the... Uh, one new franchise and then one continuation, you know, per year. So that way they can kind of get both audiences. You introduce a new character and then you have the, uh, the you know, mainstay um, in the same year. So this year, you got Captain America Civil War, you know, being the um, mainstay, the sequel. And then you have good old Doctor Strange ending up the year. I got to say, Marvel's been doing some pretty interesting things with their TV shows. And it's going to look like it's, it's going to be pretty cool how they kind of balance those two out. Because basically, they've got Daredevil dropping right now. Then you have Civil War, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter um, wrapping up at that point as well. Then you have Luke Cage, which just got announced for September, um, which is pretty awesome. So you'll have Luke Cage coming out in September this year, um, a a full-length show. And then you'll have Doctor Strange to close out the year, basically, for uh, Marvel. It's a pretty nice lineup for uh, to keep the continuation going you know, throughout the year. And then they're probably building up hype for the next lineup of, of movies. So I'd say uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff going on with that. If you're not hyped for a Civil War? Okay. I, You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the trailer everything else for that as well in a minute here. But I figured I'd show you guys a bit of Doctor Strange first. Uh, so as far as this Doctor Strange goes, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, he's a pretty, pretty well-known actor at this point. He's been up for a couple of Academy Awards. I gotta say that, you know, it's kind of like a safe choice as far as, like, what people expect, but I think he's he's perfect for the role. I mean, he's got the charisma, he's got, like, the, the right zaniness to it. I think that Sherlock was, was an interesting character, and I feel like he has the he has the, the, the weight and, like, the, the he just got the posture for the role. He, he can pull it off, you know, and not have people doubt that. So I think that they, they got the right person to, to play that character, and I think that, like, with a character like this, with Doctor Strange... Like you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see them like kind of moving away from um, Tony a bit, you know, and and him being like the head of the head honcho of the the universe. Um, let me pull up the. Uh... So here's another picture of a Doctor Strange here. I mean, like I think that there's there's definitely some 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 mystery to the film right now, but overall I think that it's it's looking like it's, it's sizing up pretty well. We got the uh, a pretty nice cast so far for it. Um, and a, a couple other cool things that are looking pretty, pretty awesome. I, I like the suit, um, like the cape and everything else he's got going on there. Like, it's, it's just nice. Like, I, I like the look so far of the, of the film. I want to see kind of how he gets into the alternate universes and all that stuff. Like, it should be pretty, pretty interesting. Like, there's not as much known about the movie yet because they're all hype about Civil War and they're going to be pushing that pretty hard for the next few months. But I think that when we start seeing more from, uh, from, uh, Doctor Strange, I'm sure we'll have a trailer. Most likely, uh, there'll be a trailer probably dropping with Civil War, most likely, um, showing off a bit more of the film. But I, I, I like the way that like the uh, movie's looking so far. Um, they've they've been casting a few um, key roles. They have a, uh, they have Baron Mordo already cast, who's a well known actor. You may have seen him in a, few, a couple other films. Um, I see I can pull up a picture of him as well. But yeah, basically, there's it's looking it's looking solid. Uh, a lot of people were, you know, are worried that there won't be enough of the uh, magic aspect in the film. But yeah, like A-Town said, I'm pretty hyped for Doctor Strange too. I think it could be a, a real surprise film um, because it has a bit more ground to cover than um, Ant-Man did, and it doesn't seem it doesn't feel as closed off as Ant-Man did. Um, I think like, Ant-Man kind of had this. Ant-Man kind of had like this this uh, 
this cool like heist film feel to it, but it also felt like it was a really closed off story. Like you know, it was really like kind of a smaller script. And they threw in a couple a couple key moments in there to make it kind of bigger. You know, kind of grow out a little bit, but it wasn't quite you know epic in scale. I think that the strange could be pretty big in scale. And it is going to have an origin story, so they go over, you know, his entire creation and all that stuff. I think that Doctor Strange has one of the in- mo- mo- most interesting origin stories, so I think that that's a good idea. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm cool with that. I know that people get tired of origin stories um, with comic book movies, but I think this is a smart move on their part. They should definitely go that route. Um, because he's, he's an interesting character. They have so many things they can, you know, actually use with that one, you know? Um... Doctor Strange seems extremely interesting. Yeah, I, I think that it's one of those that it's, it's one of those that can really surprise some people. I think. Um, I think that Benedict Cumberbatch has the, the he has the, the the you know grandiose nature to just kind of pull it off. And I like the suit. The cape is really smooth. I think of the Dormammu whole thing. Like I could I, Dormammu on screen would be so badass. I, I'm so hyped for that. I would love to see Dormammu on screen, like a full like actual like. Dormammu just like standing there with the fucking flames it would be so badass um, but yeah I, I say that there's some interesting things going on with that movie they got the um, director behind um, the movie Sinister I believe to um, actually film the movie um, he did it like the um, this is a horror movie called Sinister so there's gonna be some probably there'll be some, some dark um, kind of terrifying moments some horror and you know magic mystical um, elements in there um, I know that Kevin Feige, who's um, you know the um, head of Marvel, he said there's gonna be some some pretty trippy moments in there too, some pretty like out there, zany, trippy, you know, mind fuck kind of moments. I'm I'm down for that. <laughs> ah, got a fog in my throat. I'm, I'm I'm down for some of that action, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of a you know just kind of trippy, out there moments. I don't know if you guys have seen Ant Man, but there's a moment in Ant Man like that that that. Uh, I don't, I don't spoil too much because I know Ant-Man's, Ant-Man's somewhat new. So some of you guys may have seen Ant-Man, but there's a moment in Ant-Man where um, he um, tests the uh, subatomic level to um, go even smaller than, he, than he's ever gone before. And there's some pretty strange things going on in that world he was in. I think there's going to be some pretty some pretty similar things going on in um, Doctor Strange where he um, goes to this um, different realm, I guess you could say. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they explore that. You know, I'm sure there's going to be some pretty cool... Um, comedic moments all, all the young uh, marvel films have some humor to them you know so it's not surprising if they they go that route too so i think that, that that's the, probably the good good way to go um that balance it out but i think dr strange is one of those characters that definitely has an origin story that is actually worth telling um you know surgeon loses a billion in his hands it's a good it's a good route to go um for sure um but I hope that they give him a bit more weight than uh, the comics have gone lately. But we'll see. All right, so DCB Six Shot is not DCB Six Shot is not down for Civil War. He's like, nope, it's one of my least favorite storylines in Marvel. I think that um, Civil War is one of those things that was really shocking, and it was just really well received when it came out. And like looking back at it now, there's still some problematic moments to it. But it still it still holds up pretty well. Okay, there's some good stuff in there that you think, you know, it, 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 it holds up. It holds up okay. I think that like it's not as um, it's not withstanding the test of time as much as um, you know, you probably like it to you, um now. But it still does some pretty. There's still some pretty good moments in there. Some of them are gimmicky moments, like you know the whole Spider-Man reveal, um, and being unmasked and that kind of stuff. But there, there's some good lines in there, you know. There's some good moments in there overall that I think are, you know, they lead to some good questions. And then they kind of went away from um, Ant Man's potential by cl- um, closing the movie so much. Yeah, Ant Man definitely had a um, feeling like it was a, a closed script. But at the same time, I have a love hate relationship with Ant Man because I feel like um, I really wanted Edgar Wright to direct that film, and I think that. He brought something to the film that, you know, was still kind of missing from it. It ended up being a pretty solid film to me. I would say, like, it's kind of like a B-level. Ant-Man's a B-level, um, you know, hero. And it felt like a B-level movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I feel like it didn't, it didn't necessarily escalate Ant-Man to being, you know, top level or anything. It just, it just kind of created a, a cool way to introduce a character. But... He'll be, he's a pretty cool character to have in the Avengers, and I think that having him have his own film made that kind of cool. You know what I mean? 
like now he's kind of on that level with the other Avengers that he's he could at least uh, you know sit in the same room as them um, after that movie. So I think that that was done well. I didn't think that some of the some of the points in Ant Man were kind of like eh. Uh, you know, a theme that people complain about with Marvel, which is a, a fair enough, um, a fair enough argument, is that Marvel's villains just are not strong enough. Well, they don't they don't hold enough weight to them. And without a strong enough villain, you guys know I love villains. Without like a you know a villain to anchor the story, a lot of a lot of these stories fall flat. Ant Man was one of those movies where um, it did some really cool stuff. The um, like costume was badass. The um, the whole like use of the ants and all that stuff was pretty cool. Um, I think they they undersold Hope with uh, the Wasp and everything. Like they should have used her more in that movie. But overall, like the movie itself was a, a charming film. It was you know a, a cool heist film, and it did some pretty cool stuff. Some some pretty cool uh, special effects and stuff like that. But Yellow Jacket had one of the best like badass costumes. Like it was his costume was badass. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty cool. But the character, eh, you know. Like, the villains don't hold any weight, you know, as far as, like, that goes. Like, that's one thing I would give some of these other, like, Captain America, you know, Civil War was badass. You know, it had, like, the weight to it. Winter Soldier was so intimidating, I thought that people were going to fucking die. I'm like, oh, shit, Winter Soldier's not playing around. Like, he was going, he was going for a fucking, uh, for Black Widow's head, man. He wanted he wanted their head on a, on a stake right there. I was like, oh, you know what? One of them might die in this movie. I'm not sure. You know, like, you know, that kind of weight is what you need to get these movies to get to that level. You escalate it to that level where people take it seriously. You need a strong enough villain to hold that. Which is why, going into Civil War, um, for our next film, the last film on the list here, Civil War, I think, has the weight there because there's some, some things that you guys might not have noticed um, that aren't really being talked about much, but there's some things being put in that film that are not going to be just Tony versus Captain America. You know what I mean? They have crossbones. There's rumors of Baron Zemo popping up in that film. These are some major villains, all right, that are, are huge villains in the in the universe. I feel like that are, are going to be pretty awesome. I think that one of the things about Marvel is that, unfortunately, a lot of their villains got stolen from the other um, franchises. You know, like Fox has the rights to Magneto and Doctor Doom. Sony has the rights to Norman Osborn. Like, these were some pretty big names in the Marvel Universe, you know what I mean? Like, Norman Osborn, he's been involved in so many stories, you know, Secret Avengers, you know, Dark Avengers, all that stuff, you know, Iron Patriot, you know, and just overall Green Goblin stuff. Like, he's been a mainstay, and you got Doctor Doom's always doing his own thing. Those kind of villains, Galactus, you know, like, they're huge parts of the Marvel Universe as far as villains go, and without them, you have to kind of fill in their, fill in their, their gap, you know? And there's not as many of those villains out there for Marvel right now. <laughs> Siren. <laughs> Thank you for the host. Siren, how are you doing? Welcome. So we're, we're, you're just in time for... I'm um, pretty much going to roll into the um, full Civil War action. We're just coming up next. But yeah, I was just talking about the um, overall villains. Uh, you know, like DCB Six Shot said, I'm glad they brought Spider-Man in because he was the key to it. Yeah, I think that Spidey being involved is, is pretty uh, interesting. And also, just in general, I think that um, Spider-Man is such a big part of the Marvel Universe in general. That especially when you're dealing with um, New York, you know, it's kind of hard to, like, leave Spidey out. And I'm glad to see him in this, in this movie. So uh, we're going to go into um, Civil War for the last bit of the uh, podcast. We got, uh, you know, a couple minutes here. But sorry, I'm welcome to the stream. Thank you for the host. We're going to go into um, a full uh, breakdown of Civil War as far as the trailer goes and uh, what to expect from the movie uh, to end up the, the, the podcast here. So I'm going to pull the, the, the actual trailer now. And we'll go over that next. But yeah. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the podcast so far. I've been uh, enjoying chatting about the movies. I know I've been talking pretty fast. I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> but there's so much to cover, guys. We've been, we've been covering so many movies. I have to get it all in. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be some pretty, some pretty interesting... Uh, stuff coming up pretty soon for Civil War, and I think that they've been doing some pretty good promo for it too. Uh, just, just so many, so many good moments, guys. All right, let's pull it up. I'm gonna show the trailer off for you guys here. Just give me a Planet Hulk movie, and I'm, and I'm, and we're good. You know what? Planet Hulk would be a good idea as well. I think that it, it gives like Hulk kind of room to show 
given Hulk the kind of the kind of space to be Hulk and also you know be a hero without just growling at people and shouting is is pretty cool. So I agree with you there. I'll be kind of down for some Planet Hulk action. All right, let me show the trailer next, guys, and then we'll um, do a full you know kind of expectation for Civil War. But yeah, Doctor Strange, as far as box office goes, I think it's been one of those movies that um will have to a, a good trailer will have to do a lot of work for it. Um, I'm hyper Doctor Strange myself, and it's coming out probably in, in November, I believe, so there probably won't be that much competition around Doctor Strange, but it's, you gotta see, gotta see more, you know, to see how it does box office-wise. A trailer will really help that movie, I think, though. I think getting a good trailer out there for it could actually push it a, a long ways. Um, so yeah, Civil War, I'm gonna show the trailer for you guys. Hold on, one second. Let me get it up. Bam. This job. We try to save as many people as we can. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody. But you don't give up. New York. Washington, D.C. Sokovia. Okay, that's enough. Captain, people are afraid. That's why I'm here. We need to be put in check. Whatever form that takes, I'm game. I'm sorry, Tony. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. I know we're not perfect. But the safest hands are still our own. then so yeah guys that was um, the Civil War trailer I think that Marvel's uh, pretty smart about this also I gotta give credit to the team there like Russo Brothers a lot of the reason why I have faith in this film is because of the Russo Brothers like they are they did an awesome job with Civil War in my opinion um, in, in the um, Winter Soldier I think that Winter Soldier is kind of what gives me more confidence in this movie being good uh, more so than um, Avengers 2, like, had so much hype behind it, and it ended up being disappointing to me. I, I did not, like, well, it was an okay film, but Avengers 2 just had so many falling points. And, and and I love Joss Whedon. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, Joss Whedon's run on X-Men was awesome. Um, Buffy and Angel. And he's done some, some awesome stuff, but there were just so many moments, like, Avengers 2 are just like, ugh. Like, Ultron, just so talkative, and just, it just did not do it well for me at all. Ultron should have been, Ultron could have been, like, you know, that villain that could have put, like, Marvel ahead of a lot of other, um, stories when it comes to, like, villains. Like, Ultron could have been that villain for them, but it would have been on a whole nother level. Right now, like, you know, the most, like, consistent villain for, like, Marvel was probably, like, Loki. Where, like, people, everyone respects and, like, loves the Loki character in the Marvel films. 
Ultron could have been up there where it could have been one of those like, oh my god, Ultron was so awesome. Right now, Winter Soldier and Loki are pretty much the only ones that like I really still, you know, like, oh my god, they're so badass every time I see him. But yeah, basically Civil War. I'd say like this clearly holy shit, hella hype for Spider Man. Awesome stuff. But I think overall this is still gonna be a Captain America movie. Which people seem to be forgetting. I think that people are like, oh, it's gonna be Avengers two point five. Captain America is Captain America, I think, is is most likely still gonna be the focal point for this film. I think that the way Winter Soldier ended, um, with Bucky and everything else going on there, that the the weight feels you know, it feels real. Which is why I give this more credit than I think um, X Men Apocalypse, for example, because X Men didn't doesn't have that weight established between the characters. It doesn't have like that that full you know history there that like makes you like hope that both characters end up okay. Um, the problem is with Ultron, he was like an everyone villain. I just think the problem with Ultron was that he was he was like a version of Tony Stark. They made him too much like Tony. Like he was like a like a Tony a Tony baby like a Tony child, like if 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 Tony Tony Stark's ego got even bigger, and he turned into like a a giant sociopath. I mean that's basically what Ultron was. He just he just kept talking. He kept talking about how he was better than everybody else. And Ultron should have been like the Ultron that you saw like in a teaser trailer for for the film before it came out was the Ultron I wanted. I wanted that fucking Ultron. The one with the fucking glowing head and just the voice that was creepy as shit. I wanted that Ultron that was just gonna, like, you know, just a mass psychopath killer who was, like, the, all human race have to be destroyed. I didn't want, like, talky Gabby Ultron over there. Oh, yeah, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm Iron Man Jr. I don't care about that Ultron. It, I feel like they, they, they kind of they set up some things for this movie here, Civil War, but it just it just cheapened the movie a bit with uh, the character. Um, but yeah, a lot of people were, were not happy with um, Hank Pym being replaced as far as the creation of Ultron goes. And I understand. But I think that from a standpoint of the films, it was smart to have Tony create um, Ultron, but they didn't execute it well. And that's where, you know, and that's why I say that the film itself has some great moments in there. there were, I mean, like the, like the vision and all that stuff is pretty badass. But there were just some moments of just like, eh, like... Quicksilver, I didn't really care about the whole like Thor storyline, whatever that was. I didn't care about either. There were just some moments in there that just didn't make any sense and just were just a waste of time. Um, but yeah, Civil War. I say like basically with this film, a few things gonna be excited uh, for it. The Russo brothers who um, did Winter Soldier are behind this one. Um, they've been planning out this, this this story and everything else here. If you guys don't know, Russo brothers, they they are. It's kind of interesting because they're they're an interesting directing crew. They're um, two two brothers. Um, they they did a lot of um, episodes of Community, which is another show I love a lot. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Community, but it's a, a, a show that used to come on NBC, a comedy show. Um, so they went from doing um, Community pretty much uh, to doing stuff like this, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, the film itself, I think, is looking pretty solid. Just because overall... Um, Thor has a storyline, movie-wise. Oh, God. Yeah, the Thor... We're not even to start on Thor. I like Thor, too. It's like, I wanted the Dark World to be good. I was like, oh, God. They got the guy behind Game of Thrones doing the directing, and... We're not going to go down that route right now, guys. We're not, we're not, we're not going to get sidetracked on, on the Thor, the Thor um, hate, okay? But just... Hopefully, Thor gets his, his, his due in Thor 3. Right in the Rock, which is coming out, I think, next year um, with Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. So, no love for Tony after Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 was fucking trash. I'll say it, guys. I will say it. I will rant all day about Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 was whack. I'm sorry. Whatever. Trevor and, and the Mandarin and all that shenanigans. It was a buddy cop film, okay? Iron Man 3 was a buddy cop movie starring Don Cheadle and Tony Stark. Okay, Robert Downey Jr. It was not a fucking comic movie. It was just, it was just those two running around... Wearing suits and, and shooting guns. It was like, you know why it's like that? Because the director also did Lethal Weapon 1 through 3. And it felt like a fucking Lethal Weapon movie. Alright? It was like Mel Gibson and fucking Danny Glover all over again. Whatever. I'm not gonna get started on that rant right there. Not right now. Um, but yeah, whatever. Fuck that. The Jacks here, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the stream. Iron Man 3 can kiss my ass. That movie was just a waste of time. 
But I'm like, because the, the movie made no sense. It was stupid. There were so many random fucking moments in that movie that didn't make any fucking sense at all. You had like the, the stupid kid, like he, they found the, the random kid in that, in that house, and his mom was like, you know, in some some stupid shit, the extremist armor. The like the the um the the fucking the hundred Iron Man suits that fucking um are made out of aluminum foil. Like, what's the point of having fucking Iron Man suits and they just um get chopped in, in half every fucking like ten seconds? Like, just stupid. And don't get started on fucking Super Pepper, Super Pepper or whatever the hell that was. Oh, I'm hooked up, guys. Pepper, just go on ham. It's just it's just bad. Anyways, going back to war, Civil War. I think that um as you saw in the trailer, there's some 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 moments in there for. Uh, crossbones, uh, which is you know from the um, Civil War, the um, Winter Soldier storyline. He's back again with the full co- costume and outfit, which is pretty badass. Uh, I think Baron Zemo may be making an appearance at some point. Also, the overall story, I think that you know, like DCB is saying, there are some weak points in the story, but I think that the way they're handling it in the film is actually pretty smart. Uh, <laughs> forgot about Super Pepper. Yes, exactly. Everyone forgot about that shit. Oh my god. Oh my god, Iron Man 3. Fuck that movie. Anyways, so I think that overall, I think that the, the good, a good thing about this film is that the, the actual weight behind the story makes sense. So basically the breakdown of Civil War, you know, Iron Man is like, you know what, we need to be put in check. We need someone to actually regulate us because we have these superheroes running around getting into these giant fights, you know, when no one's here to actually regulate them. They're just, you know, we're like vigilantes almost. Like, you know, we're out here destroying buildings and people are dying. So I can see where where Tony's coming from, but Tony's also suffering from fucking PTSD. He's been fucking tripping balls since he, since he got from that um, wormhole in Avengers 1. So he's all over the place. He's also kind of mind-fucked by, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch a couple times already here. So he's extremely paranoid all the fucking time. And then we had Captain America on the other end, who's basically been screwed over by the government once already today, you know, and then, like, first off, from a standpoint of the storylines, you've got Iron Man over here, you know, saying, look, government has to have to regulate us, blah, blah, blah. You had Captain America on the other side saying, look, we let fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. and all these other people regulate us, and what happened? S.H.I.E.L.D. ended up being fucking Hydra. <laughs> like, like, Hydra ended up being, like, the government. So why could I trust the government again? Fuck them. So... I can understand both standpoints. Plus, of course, if, if everyone's going to um, be held accountable for, then of course they're going to go after Winter Soldier because he's been murking people since, like, 1960. I mean... And Cap does not let go of his friends. That's, that's the one thing. Like, loyalty is the most important shit to Cap, you know, ever. So, I can understand both sides. I mean, like, I understand Cap's side more. So, like, which one... The guys, I have to ask. Like, which one are you guys going for? Are you going for more Iron Man or Captain America? Team Cap? Team Iron Man? Keep in mind, Team Team Cap and Team Iron Man, like, Team Iron Man has Vision, um, Black Widow, Black Panther, War Machine. Team Cap has um, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, um, Scarlet Witch, and, of course, Cap. I don't know anything about the comics, but with us up, what, what the hell is up with Spidey's little-ass little, little kid voice? Well, Spider-Man's a teenager. He's like a young teenager. Like, high school freshman. So, he sounds like how you would think it would sound. Give me Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Well, you know that's happening. You already got the news about that one, too. But I'm, I'm leaning more towards Team Captain America. I just think that Cap, Captain America, I feel like he understands what Tony is saying, but he can't let down his friends, you know? Like, Bucky was, was used... You know, he was used for so long by the government, by a government that was created, basically, um, under the shadow organization that ended up being Hydra. So, like, I can understand him not wanting to trust the fucking government again after they pretty much led to his friend being brainwashed and, like, you know, out here doing hits for years on end. So I just, I can't lean towards Tony's argument there, but at the same time, I understand what Tony's saying. But he's like, you know what, we've caused all this trouble... With the Avengers, I'm like, really? Tony's caused most of the fucking trouble. Like, Tony with the fucking Ultron shit. You know, like, no one told him to do the Ultron program. So that led to, like, you know, all the people dying. Tony should be put in place, you know what I mean? But we look at we look at Team Captain America. All the people on that team have been either, you know, mind-controlled or have been misused. 
You know, like, they've all been screwed over by, like, some organization or someone bigger than them. You know, you've got it, you got, you got Scarlet Witch, you know, they were misused by Ultron, they got their um, group there by Hydra. You got Winter Soldier, who's been pretty much, you know, misused since he got discovered. Um, you got Captain America, who was pretty much fooled in, by the government as well, and S.H.I.E.L.D. Then you've got um, Ant-Man, he's just, he's just, he's not there. And Hawkeye, you know, he's been mind-controlled by Loki. You know, they're all abused, basically, on that side of the, the spectrum. I'm not sure what Black Panther's role is. I will say that Black Panther looks fucking badass. Black Panther looks so badass right now, guys. I mean, like, Jesus. Like, he's... The suit, like, it's so clean. Uh, and, then, like, the vibranium. Like, the, he's just eating bullets to the chest and then care. So awesome. Siren's Team Iron Man. Of course she is, because she's Team, you know, Iron Bay. She's all about that, you know, that Tony Stark life. <laughs> Little Justin Bieber. Oh, my God. You're for Team Spider-Man. Yeah, like, I think that be, Spidey being in the movie is, is pretty smart. People were hating on his eyes or whatever. Like, oh, Spider-Man, he, he doesn't have the big eyes. Blah, blah, blah. Look, look, okay. That suit is fucking badass. Like, the eyes, having, like, eyes that actually, you know, have emotion, and they, like, squint and stuff like the comic books, is so awesome to me. Like, that's so, that's so badass. Like, I feel like that's pretty cool. Um, and you've never seen that before in a film, like, in a, in a, a Spider-Man movie or any comic book movie. See his eyes actually like you know change during the film, like that's so cool to me. I like I like the look a lot. I'm sure that Tony Pratt has something to do with that. I'm sure Iron Man gave him the, like the seat with the squinty eyes. But people have been people have been crying about that. Like oh the Spider Man, oh my god, no. Like whatever, guys. You know what? I you know what? Fans will complain about everything. But I cannot jump on that on that bandwagon. But you know what? People cried about cried about that for the longest. Let me pull up a picture of, of Spidey here. People, people cried about Spider-Man and everything else here, and, 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 and but when Deadpool does it, like, hold on, on, on screen, god damn it. Let me show it here. Like, you see, you see Spidey, like, Spidey, like, his eyes change when he's um squinting and everything else there. Like, that was so cool to me. Like, I like the look. Like, he's got, he's got a little bit of black in there. It looks like, I'm pretty sure Tony probably has something to do with the mask I and mean, with the whole um suit. But that's fine. Like, it, it works. So I don't have a problem with Spidey having the eyes, like, you know, like the, the classic 40s look and stuff like that. And it, 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 it adjusts. Like, it makes sense to me. I don't understand why people are so upset about it. Like, the small logo, the small Spidey like logo on there. I don't get what the big deal is about, like, that picture. I think that it looks, it looks nice. Like, we're getting Spider-Man in a fucking Marvel movie. You know how awesome that is? Spider-Man and Marvel film, guys. I mean, come on. He's holding the fucking shield right there. Things that we never thought we were going to actually uh, see in a film, is, or they're, they're happening. Spider-Man in the Marvel film is happening, guys. I mean, like, that's big enough news to me. But yeah, Black Panther is pretty damn legit as well. I think that there's so many good things that we haven't seen yet in that movie. That's what I'm saying, like... Civil War is months away, but they show just enough to get people hyped for everything to come out. You know, like I think it's got the right, the perfect storm. I think Civil War. I thought Sony owned him. Yes, Siren Songs. That's what I'm saying. Sony, Sony does own Spider-Man in the in the movie property rights, but they made a deal with Marvel to have Marvel pretty much produce their next film in exchange for him showing up in the Marvel universe. So that means that Marvel is producing. Um and holding uh the the reins on the next Spider Man film. Uh but Sony will be pretty much still in they'll still own the rights. So basically Sony said, Spider Man, we stuck at doing good movies for you, so we'll let Marvel do it for us now. So Spidey Pool, yeah, exactly. Like people people are like, Oh Deadpool, we love how your eyes could move and they show uh, you know, they show different reactions. But when Spider-Man does it, fuck you guys. It's like, okay, well, just say money talks. I mean, Marvel didn't have to pay them. I mean, like, they have you, did you guys watch Spider-Man 2? Did you watch Amazing Spider-Man 2? Like, tell me where that, that fucking train wreck was going to go after that movie. I'm just saying. Where, where was Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 going to lead them? Exactly. <laughs> like... Like that, I'm not. That's another movie. I'm not. I'm, you know what? Sp Amazing Spider-Man two and Iron Man three are up there with like 
If you're on another whole another, like a whole other level, okay? Electro, just whatever the hell that was. All right, you got fucking Green Goblin, the Goblin um, virus, or whatever the hell that shit is. A hereditary Goblin disease that get, makes you grow claws. Just, oh, it was so bad. It was so bad, guys. Spider-Man 2, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was just... Oh, you know what? I want to stop, you know, this goblin, this goblin um, genetic uh, disease from taking over my body and making me turn into a, a, a green goblin. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some, uh, some pure spider venom, radio, radioactive spider venom, and then inject it exactly into my bloodstream because that should probably work, right? Because, <laughs> like, who the hell pulls out like an untested fucking vial full of spider venom? And, and um, radioactive spider spider fucking DNA, and injects it right into their bloodstream, and then thinks it's gonna be a fucking a good idea. And what fucking life? And you're supposed to be the head of a fucking company that ha handles um fucking biological shit. I don't understand. Whatever. Anyways, guys, I'm not gonna get started on fucking Amazing Spider-Man two. Just know that that movie fucking sucks. The best part about about the entire film was the suit. I actually like the spider suit a lot. Spidey suit was awesome. Also, um, the last fight scene between Green Goblin and you know the whole thing with uh, Gwen Stacy that was well done. That was the best part of the entire film was that fight in the in the clock tower. Too bad the shit had no weight to it because of um, you're not giving a fuck about uh, Harry Osborn at all because he just popped into the film. If they had made the movie three movies that they were, they were planning on doing originally instead of trying to cram it into the two movies, it would have been a great scene. But since they just decided to introduce Harry Osborn, you know, in like a fucking 15 minute scene, you know, it had no weight to it. So, whatever. Rant over. Civil War, I'm going to go see it. Day one, for sure. That movie's living up to the hype right now, as far as like in my, my mind. So, in order of films, I'm going to start wrapping up things here, guys. I'd say Civil War, um, hype level was pretty damn high. I'd say Civil War is probably the highest hype for me right now. I'm trying to get, get too aboard the hype train. But it's, it's up there. Uh, Civil War. Um, I say Civil War, then Suicide Squad, then Doctor Strange, uh, then Batman vs Superman, and then X Men will probably my order of hype right now. I want to see all those films do well. Batman vs Superman can still surprise me, but Civil War guys is looking pretty damn sharp. I mean, Black Panther alone is like making me get pretty hyped for that movie. Black Panther and Spider Man together. You got Hawkeye shooting fucking arrows to Ant Man popping off of it. It's just, it's just so good. And there's still villains that aren't even even shown in the, in the film at all yet in the trailers. Ugh. Exciting, sensational, guys, sensational. Yeah. <laughs> sensational. <laughs> but yeah, Marvel owns the next Spider Man film. Yeah, sure, exactly, guys. It's, you don't, you don't understand the Goblin struggle. He needs some milk. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I mean Gwen, Gwen Stacy. I thought that was the best part of the movies, guys. It was, it was the whole like Gwen and part like you know and Peter struggle was awesome. Um, I want to see Doctor Strange because of who's playing him. Yeah, I'm saying it's pretty hype. So, all right, guys. I think I think that that pretty much wraps up all of the comic book action we got going on there. Feel free to follow the channel and come back again for our next episode. I'm not sure what's gonna be yet. I haven't decided exactly what the episode will be, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh. I think that we'll probably do a, a, a review of Batman vs. Superman. Good or bad, there will be a review of that movie. You guys know my, I'm pretty opinionated, as you can see. Um, we'll probably do a, a full rundown of that film when it drops after a week. I'll give you, I'll give you guys a solid week. I'll give you, a, you guys a solid week uh, to basically, you know, catch Batman vs. Superman and, and make sure you, you, you can watch all that shit before spoilers start dropping. I'm going to give you guys some time before I give my review. Uh, make sure that the first half of the review will be, you know, spoiler-free as much as possible, and then I'll go into full fucking spoilerific awesomeness, okay? So, if you guys have any more questions for me, we're going to be ending the stream in about two minutes here, and then I'll be uh, getting into uh, a game. I don't know, guys. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll take a little 10-minute break, and then we'll play a video game, and then after I stream a little bit, we're gonna, um, I'll probably host up my buddy Siren Songs, because he's doing a 24-hour stream today, for our birthday. Birthday haiku. You know, I'm gonna give you a little love here, Siren Songs, it's, it's her birthday, birthday stream. So, Ric Flair sound clip, yes, Ric Flair is here. Why don't you get him 
about to say it's better to be a real man. No, don't worry, okay? Where do you see the Jack starring in the new Spawn movie? Is that, is that, is that the point of the Jack Stewart? That you guys starring in the new Spawn? I would be down for a new Spawn movie, though. A new Spawn? I'm, I'm still upset that Spawn wasn't in fucking uh, Mortal Kombat. I'm still sad about that shit. But hey, what are you going to do? You swear you're hitting Spider-Man versus Superman? What? But yeah, guys, it's been it's been fun. I'm gonna uh, most likely uh, I'm not sure what game I'm gonna play tonight. I think we might be playing some Hitman for a little bit because it just dropped. Um, and I got it for like 15 bucks. <laughs> the Mercedes Benz, though, hell yeah, you you know what's up. All right, guys, so it's been it's been a good a good cast. I'm gonna put this up on on YouTube and such. You guys can watch it again later on. Tell your friends. I'll probably edit it, edit it out uh, later on tonight, and then we get a uh, get it up for you guys. But yeah, thank you for hanging out. I think it was a pretty cool podcast. You guys came out and hung out with me and we asked questions and gave you comments. We'll be doing a full out uh, Batman vs. Superman review um, on, the, on the next one. So I'll give you guys some time to uh, prepare yourselves and also bring in your, your anger or your hype and we'll get it, we'll get it going again uh, pretty soon. So uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. We appreciate it. I'll pull up the, um, the Doomcast screen again here for you guys. Bam. You know what? I still like the right. I think, I think the black is pretty cool, but the white is pretty good too. Bam. All right, guys. So it's been fun. We'll put some jams on. And I'll be back again soon. Thank you guys for hanging out. It was, it was, it was fun. It was a good time. See you guys later on.